This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Clocks and Colors. Clocks and Colors is handcrafted men's jewelry. They have pendants, chains, rings, bracelets, and apparel. You can visit their website at www.clocksandcolors.com. Colors, in this case, is spelled C-O-L-O-U-R-S. Just opened up is Etta Love. That is the sister company to Clocks and Colors. It's for women. They have pendants, rings, bracelets, earrings, and you can check them out at www.etalove.com. That's E-T-A-H-L-O-V-E.com. Second sponsor of the podcast today is Manscaped. Get yourself a precise trim. Proper manscaping requires precision engineered tools. Not only does a man's sensitive areas require it, but both hygiene and ergonomics demand it. Out now is the Lawnmower 4.0. This is a top quality shaver. It features an LED spotlight with an on off switch so you can see and you're not going in blind down there. You know what I mean? This thing is running at 7,000 RPMs. This thing is waterproof. This thing has a wireless charger. And I want to help you guys today because right now you can get 20% off and free shipping with the discount code OSIRIS20. That's O-S-I-R-I-S-2-0 at www.manscaped.com. Let's get started. Right. Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 16 of the Infinite Mind podcast. I just want to say thank you. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since the last one. It's mainly because I've been moving studios. Uh, it's not something you'll see a ton on the podcast, but uh, you know, in the future, playthrough videos with Born of Osiris and other things, it's a whole different setup in here. It looks a little different, um, you know, but the, the, the studio change is kind of a location and size change. It's actually smaller, so I feel like I can control the, uh, the reflections of sound in here. A lot of the stuff I had for, you know, bass traps and acoustics and things like that, I feel like I needed a little bit more in the last spot. So I can actually control this room really well. I'm excited about it. Excited to, you know, keep writing all the things I write, doing podcasts in here. It's exciting for me. But yeah, so thank you. It's been a couple of weeks. We were on a roll every Friday. We'll be back to that every Friday now. But, you know, moving locations was a challenge. I was also in Denver visiting friends. And uh, yeah, I just had an opportunity. But uh, yeah, here we are. Apologize for that, but we're back on track every Friday. So let me remind you, if uh, you know the bulk of this is questions, so you guys submit questions. Those are on Tuesdays on my Instagram. So go to my Instagram story. Um, that's at Leo Cyrus. And on Tuesdays, you know, sometimes it's midday by the time I remember. To be honest, I run my own show here, right? Um, I'll post like a photo and it'll say uh, uh, questions for Friday's podcast. So that's where you submit a question and I answer as many as I can here on the podcast on Fridays. So that's how you do that. Uh, but yeah, we're back on track, right? And, uh, you know, in, in other news, most exciting news, Born of Osiris, Angel or Alien is out now. And I'm fucking pumped because it's been a long time coming through this pandemic and just all the fucking setbacks of the last year for, you know, everyone in the world, not just me, of course. Um, but listen, Angel or Alien, it's out today. 14 tracks, 55 minutes of tech metal goodness. Get it, get it. Uh, www.bornofosiris.com. You can get uh, the CD, the vinyl, the merchandise. Uh, we got a little bit of everything. We got stores for other countries too. So no matter where you are, we got you sorted. I think it's all at bornofosiris.com. It's kind of like the landing page. So no matter where you're at, it should lead you to the store that you need to get whatever you want. Um, and you know what also is exciting? We're starting to roll out shows now. So we have some shows in Texas. I'll get to tour dates at the end of the podcast, but... Doing Texas uh, at the end of July. Uh, we're gonna do some some uh, you know U.S. shows in the fall. We're hoping to do U.K. Europe uh, in December. Uh, of course, that's assuming you know I don't know what their policies are, where they are in pandemic, whether they're allowing people other, other countries in. Those things are kind of up in the air. But December is the plan for U.K. Europe, and then January back in the states. That'll be a big A market. Angel or Alien, uh, you know, full tour. We're gonna play as much as the album as possible. We've talked about playing uh, the album front to back. We'll see how it goes. Um, but, you know, it's just things are getting really exciting. As far as in motive, I'm actually getting together with Dave, the singer, uh, in like three or four days. And so we're going to do some writing. That's exciting. Uh, just another reminder uh, that Cruel Games 
is out now. Now, that's a record by The Relentless, which is the band that I write music for uh, from the movie American Satan, uh, which became a TV show called Paradise City. So if you're not familiar with that, um, check it out. The movie's great. The show's fun. Um, and there's a band in it called The Relentless. I write their music. If you follow the podcast, you've probably heard me say it a million times. So that's what that is. But Cruel Games is the record recently put out. And uh, check that out if you haven't. It's an exciting time. There's a lot of things coming. As far as my solo music, um, the second album, I, sh- I hope to be announcing that in the coming months. That's done. And to be honest, this morning I'm working on track six of the third album. So, you know, I'm, I'm always working. Head of the game on things. And I'm always going to have, you know, music right around the corner for you guys, right? Cool. Let's get to some of your questions. Again, these are submitted Tuesdays on my Instagram, at Leo Cyrus. Um, you know, sometimes people put them on YouTube. If I see them, I'll get to them. But for the most part, it's it's safe to say that your, your best bet is uh, Instagram, my Instagram. First question, what is your favorite song from the new record? So uh, I've been doing a ton of interviews in the last week, and this is the number one asked question. I, it's hard because they're all like all your baby, right? Your, your new babies, and, and you just love them all, each one for a different reason. Excuse me, but... Right now, I want to go with a song called Shadow Mourn, and it's the last track on the album. It's really exciting for me because if you follow my solo music, you know that it's, uh, you know, I play all the instruments um, that you hear, uh, except for saxophone. So saxophone is played by Adrian. He's from a band called the Mars Volta. And so right around the time the Born of Osiris album was finishing up, I think they were just tracking the rest of vocals in California. I was touring, uh, performing Infinite Mind around the world, right? I was on tour with animals as leaders and car bomb and doing some really cool stuff performing Infinite Mind, right? So we just got back from Europe and we were in uh, California for NAM, January 2020 NAM. And uh, so Adrian and I are there performing um, and, and the full band, but in particular, uh, Adrian wanted to come to the studio, right? So Born of Stars was recording vocals down the street uh, in LA so I said, Adrian, come with me. There was a song called Shadow Mourn that I have like fake programmed sax, uh, saxophone on right now, you know, and I think it'd be cool if you just come and laid it down. Well, we drive an hour down the road. We're at the studio. And in one night he laid down sax, you know, I think in like three or four places on the album. Uh, but, you know, Shadow Mourn's where it's really featured uh, as a main instrument. And it was so cool. This, this guy's a Grammy award winning, uh, you know, saxophone player, right? So the dude's unbelievable, impresses me. I'm so lucky to get to jam with him in my uh, solo band and solo music, right? So, but the reason I bring that up is because at one point, like the chorus is happening of the song and that's where it's like a main, you know, sax, uh, you know, melody, right? Um, and so it's looped uh, at this point in time. He's just getting the perfect take, right? But anyways, it's looping. All of a sudden, he just hits on this fucking saxophone solo and it's all freestyled. No planning. He had never heard the song before that we walked into the studio that night. Um, and he just knocked out the solo. So we kept the solo on there. We kept obviously everything he did as far as replacing my fake saxophone that I had in the pre-pro. And he's on like the outro of Poster Child. You'll, you'll hear him a little bit. And I think in a couple other places, I think he might be on Waves, which funny enough is a song I sing on. So if you're wondering who the voice is on Waves, it's me. Fun for me, you know, 20 some years into, you know, playing guitar and all of a sudden I get to, you know, explore my voice as well. So it's fun. Anyways, I'm going to go with Shadow Mourn just because I feel like the saxophone brings a whole new vibe, you know, to Born of Osiris that you've never heard before. You've heard it with my solo stuff, so it's not going to sound foreign, but um, it's cool. It's a whole new vibe, and, and, and I'm pumped on that. Any great plugins you recommend? Yeah, I mean, a lot of great stuff from, you know, I think we should highlight Neural DSP right now. You know, I think... A lot of, get a lot of questions, especially on the podcast, and people are like, hey, I want to start a studio, or I'm just going to like track my own music, but you know, I don't have a ton of money. I want good quality stuff. Like, How do I get it? You know, I don't have the money for all the stuff that you have, or these professionals have, or you know, whoever has whatever. What's the best way to get good quality you know, for a person maybe working minimum wage, right? And I think that's an old DSP. Anything you go with is going to sound good. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a business relationship. I make uh, patches for them. And I help them before things launch, you know, fix bugs, whatever it may be. Um, so I do get them for free. But the, the reason I say that is not to, to brag. It's to say that um, I get all of them. I have experience with all of them. And they are all incredible. So, like, I can recommend one. But I can tell you that no matter which one you buy, you're going to love it. So anything from the Neural DSP catalog. And they have great products for bass as well. 
what gives you the most hope that life will turn out positively? I just think that it's all you got. Like you got one life and things are going to happen and they're going to just fucking happen whether you like it or not. You may love certain parts of it. You may hate certain parts of it. I, I feel like life is up and down constantly, you know? And, and so with that knowledge, all you can really do is just make the best of every moment. You know, obviously you've heard it before. You don't have tomorrow. You only have today. Well, it's, it's true, you know? So I don't even know if I'm constantly thinking about, you know, how life will turn out positively. I just know that each day, if I work my hardest to create the outcome that I want, that uh, it's safe to say that if you're truly working your hardest and putting in the time for the outcome you want, that you will get it. Um, And obviously tragedies happen. Life's hard. There's shitty people. There's terrible things that happen to good people. It is the way the world works. But for the most part, I think all you can control is is your 24-hour window. And that's every day. That's all you got. Make the most out of today. And then we'll talk about tomorrow. Then when tomorrow comes, make the most out of that day. Repeat. Hope that answered your question. I don't read these questions, so you, you'll, you'll in advance. So you'll see some of them catch me off guard. Sometimes I feel like I go off on a tangent, but I hope that answers what you you know what you're going for here. How do you know if it's going to turn out positive? I don't think you do, but I think you have to just do your your damnedest to fucking work hard every day and create the outcome that you want. I recently ordered a Kiesel with your pickup in it. Could you describe it in your own words, please? Yeah, I've done it a few times on this podcast, and it's always spanky, articulate, clear. Um, You know, that was the goal. You know, I wanted something that sounded, you know, I like the single coil tone, but, you know, I like the body of a humbucker. So I wanted the body. It needed to be big. It needed to be able to play metal music and be fucking thick, right? Um, But, you know, I also like the spank of a fucking single coil and the clarity, uh, You know, it was important, too. I wanted to hear the way that I like when the string hits the fretboard and it almost comes through in your tone a little bit. You know, I know and I know gain and distortion kind of cover that up. But the goal is, how do you hear all this? The relationship between the the string and the fretboard and yet also full tone from the pickup and big body distortion, um, you know, when you're when you're sending it that way. And I think we accomplished it here, you know, and I know that I'm lucky to have a signature model guitar and I know that I'm lucky to have a signature pickup. So I want to say this, you know, as someone who's walking in and creating a, a, you know, a custom guitar and a pickup, I know that not everyone on planet earth has heard of me, right? And maybe not everyone on planet earth is a fan of me and my guitar playing. So what I needed to do was make a guitar that was in a a pickup that's bigger than me. It's not about me. It serves a goal. You know, obviously it's going to, I'm going to make sure that what I do leaning towards the heavier progressive side of music uh, can be done. But I need to make sure that I create a product that someone who has no fucking clue who I am and never even heard Born of Osiris or Infinite Mind or In Motive or whatever can pick it up and be happy. It needs to be versatile, too. So I think you're going to get a pickup. It's not going to be the hottest thing in the world. It's not going to blow your head off because it's the fuck it's made for metal. It's not what I want either. You know, if you've heard Infinite Mind, you know that I'm playing clean, low gain, all kinds of things. So you're going to get a versatile pickup. It's going to have a lot of spank to it, like single coil vibe, but it's going to have body with a hump like the humbucker vibe. And uh, yeah, I'd say that's the best description I can give you of it. Uh, But you're going to be excited. You already ordered it. I can tell you congratulations because you're going to fucking love it. You know, I'm not selling it to you right now. You already bought it. Congratulations. You're going to love it. Who is your favorite guitarist? For me, it's been Guthrie Govan for quite a while. If I'm saying his last name different, it's because I recently heard it's Govan instead of Govan. I used to say Guthrie Govan, but... uh, I was told it's Govan. So Go Through Govan is my favorite. Um, Erotic Cakes is his uh, his solo album. I think it's the best solo album I've ever heard, you know, in the world of guitar. And uh, if you haven't heard that, you have to. It changed my fucking life when I heard it. As a matter of fact, Tosin Abasi was playing second guitar in Born of Osiris um, around the Higher Place album cycle. And uh, just, you know, on stage, he wasn't writing with us or anything, but... I learned a lot from him, and uh, one thing was he showed me Guthrie Govan, and I was just, that's one of the things I'm most thankful for from, you know, Toast and Jam with us is, is showing me that artist and that album, because it, it changed the game for me as, as far as approaching guitar from a melodic, uh, melodic standpoint. Wrist check. State of watch collection, if you have one, and what is your grail? Right now I'm wearing an Oris Aquis. I find it is um, something that, you know, it's, listen, it's a nice watch it's going to cost you. However, it's not going to be the kind of thing where you bang it on a wall and you cry. You know, there's, there's pieces that, and and here's another thing I noticed, like, you know, some people get these nice, crazy watches and 
they don't want to wear them anywhere. They don't want to bang them around. But for me, a watch, you want to create memories with it. Like I can remember all the big moments that I made in this watch. I also purchased a watch for a moment in life. So this one was when I finished mixing and mastering my second solo album, which um, obviously you haven't heard yet. It's coming. So it means something to me. You know, I bought it at that moment to celebrate a certain time. And since then, I mean, the album's been done for quite a while. I know it's not out yet because of things. But, um, you know, I've created memories with this watch. Um, in my collection... You know, it ranges. To be honest, there's some Casio $15 watches that I work out in. I forget, F91W or something. I forget what the name is. It's the ones that were cool when we were in fucking high school. I love those too. And I work out and sweat all over them, go hiking with them. Um, you know, so my watch collection varies a lot from, you know, a couple thousand dollars down to um, $15, right? But um, the Grail is, you know, for me, it's a Rolex Submariner, just black, you know, on stainless. It's just a classic, timeless watch. Now, I mean, yeah, I'd like a Patek Philippe, something like that, which is so much more than the Rolex I just mentioned. But, like, if I had to pick one and only have one, it would be the Rolex. I know it's not the most expensive watch in the world, but that's just the fucking one, man. And it doesn't look too far off from the style I'm wearing now. Um, But, yeah, you know, of course I'd love a Patek or you know, something crazy like that. But uh, yeah, if, if I'm picking one, I, I'd just love a, a black Submariner, you know. Biggest non-musical influence on your music. So for me, it's just life. Um, it's when I'm sad, I'll come in the studio and get it out of my system. And that's into the a recording that will live for, forever that you, you may have, you know. Um, when I'm happy. I'm going to come in here and, and document that feeling like a journal or a notebook into a song that you might have already. You know, I had a, a special week last week visiting friends. You know, I left just feeling incredible for, you know, one reason or another. And I, and I, and I felt like I need to get this fucking down, this feeling. And I, you know, I almost finished that, you know, in the last week. And so that's the sixth song I was talking about on my, you know, third solo record. Um, just, you know, so that's it. Encapsulating moments in time, the way I feel into a song, uh, because even if it's born of Osiris, as you know, I assume you've heard, if you're here listening to this, um, you know, that we're not just a heavy metal band, it's melody, it's, um, it's feeling, you know, and, and, and the heavy shit is the feeling too, but so is the part where it breaks and it's just a beautiful guitar part or a key keyboard part all of a sudden. And you just go, ah, like, that feels good. It was a release, you know. I, I get it, funny word, but, you know, it's just like that's what music is to me is is all the emotions. And I, and I love the heavy and the emotion in Born of Osiris, but I also love a fucking song where it's just a person singing in a piano, you know what I mean? Whatever gets the feeling will get me. Um, yeah, so just life and every part of it, the, the ups and downs, all of it, I like to document it. And my way of documenting it is, um, you know, soloing my guitar right uh, anyways next question have you considered releasing tab books for boo music the answer is yes working on it now literally sent off the files that are needed i think yesterday or the day before but it was cool so obviously we switched nick uh if you don't know we switched nick rossi who was playing bass for us um, to guitar over the pandemic because we finally had the time to do so because he is a guitar player naturally um and so anything that i had uh, made on the album i would send him a video here's how you play it anything that he had made on the album he'd send me a video here's how you play it well conveniently enough like we had saved all of them right and we just put them all together sent them to my buddy who does the infinite mind tab books and uh yeah, so he's working on it now and it's coming and you know i do want to do the backlog because it's never something we've done it hasn't been something we've done yet in the Born of Osiris world, but I know that there's a demand for it. It's it's I, I watch covers and everyone's doing a great job, by the way, but there's just some things that are just fucking weird. And you can't tell when all the shit's happening, all the layers that we have to our music, and the keyboards and the harmonies and the dual vocals and the crazy drums. Like, it's hard to really pick it out. So, yeah, everyone's doing a good job on all that shit. But I know that if you could see it on paper the way that I make it uh, or we make it, uh, it would just make a lot more sense. Um, so, yeah, we're doing it. Next question is submitted blank. So cool. Sorry. What bands would you would what bands would be your dream tour to tour with? OK, I want to tour with Meshuggah. I want to tour with Gojira. 
I want to tour with um, Sleep Token. I want to tour with, you know, a couple cool ones that I would love to tour with again were Between the Buried and Me. I'd love to tour with Killswitch Engage again. I want to tour with Lamb of God. So those are some that, you know, are definitely on our, our like, we have a list with our agent who books our tours and gets us on tours. And it's who do we want to go out with, uh, meaning support. And another list is who do we want to bring out with us. Um, and some of those bands are uh, between those two. I know nothing about electric guitars and gear, so how would you advise me to learn more? Man, I would say YouTube is the best bet. You know, YouTube is changing everything. I call it YouTube University. I, you know, I'm sure a lot of people call it YouTube University. I didn't make that term. I'm sure you've heard it, but there's just so much to be learned on YouTube and just search something that interests you. You know, you want to learn about seven string guitars, type in seven string guitars, T uh, types of seven, seven string guitars, best seven string guitars, worst seven string guitars. Um, you want to learn about some sort of studio gear, same concept, just, you know, YouTube, I think is the best bet. Um, you know, maybe Instagram, like hashtags. I don't really do the hashtag thing very, very well <laughs> or very often, but, um, you know, Maybe search a hashtag of something you're interested in. You know, it might not be as good as YouTube, but, you know, I'm trying here, right? So try those. I heard you play WoW, classic or retail. I play both. What faction? Uh, you know, generally, I would say I'm, I'm a I'm fucking ride or die horde. But at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, Ronnie in my band, he's pretty hardcore alliance. And so if it comes down to playing alone or playing with Ronnie, I'll, I'll roll alliance with him. But yeah, you know, if I'm if I'm rolling and playing alone, it's a uh, horde. Shout out from Florida. What's up, Florida? Loving the new boo. Well, thank you. It's out now, so you can enjoy all of it. Is one song from Angel or Alien recorded with eight strings? Yes. Um, the song is called Crossface. How are you guys so damn tight as a band? How do you write rhythmically unique music? Um, I think, you know, we're tight as a band because we grew up together. Like half the guys grew up fucking down the street from each other, like less than a mile away. We've been playing music for so damn long. Um, you know, sophomore year of high school. And now we're in our lower 30s. And so it's just the same group of guys for so long. I understand that, you know, people think like, oh, what happened to this guitar player, that guitar player? Well, you know, we don't talk about it because it's uh, it's unprofessional to air Dirty Laundry, I feel like. Which air Dirty Laundry has obviously been aired about us and I'm, maybe you've seen it. But it's not my style. So but my point is this. This is why I bring it up. Is the core of the band has been here all along. So just because some guitar player come, came and went. You saw him on stage with us. Um, it's been the same group of people creating the, the, the skeletons of the songs. Now, some guitar player might have been here and added a guitar solo or added a lead. Whatever. But the when a demo gets submitted to Born of Osiris. It's coming from me or Cameron or now it's Nick. The people who have been, uh, you know, Cameron and I have been here all along, right? Nick's an addition now. That's great. Uh, but prior to that, like, it's been the same group of guys creating the music, playing the music. The core of the band is, you know, unchanged. How do you write rhythmically unique music? <laughs> so, listen, I'll put a fucking drum beat down that has no real pattern on kick, but it'll be like the China placement if you're talking like a breakdown or whatever symbol you want. Uh, but snare placement, right? So I know where I want the snare because that's kind of the feel. If it's a halftime or if it's driving or if it's just kind of medium. Um, and I will literally freestyle a pattern. Like a hip-hop artist would freestyle a line. Um, I'm doing the same thing, freestyling the pattern. Whatever. That's what it is, right? Cool. Record it. Um, and then let's say whatever I just did, which was terrible, but let's say I liked that. Now I have it. Now I want to put kick drums to it in my program and boom, you get a fucking breakdown. But... Um, you know, it's interesting. Now, what I just did there with my mouth for you to hear, yes, that was a pattern. Yes, you could literally recreate it right now. Um, but my point is I'll do that for like maybe three minutes, maybe five minutes. Because there's going to be more shit than there is good. And then find like your favorite 10 seconds of that. And then all of a sudden I have a rhythmic part. So does that bum you out because I'm not nerding out over time signatures? It might. But listen, you don't need to overthink everything. You know, it, it, at the end of the day... Theory is great, right? And and knowing all this is good. But like at the end of the day, like I rely on my ear number one, and and how's something going to be fun to me? Fun to me is freestyling that little rhythm that I just did for you, making it into a part. And you know what's cool? I'm like a fan of it because I almost didn't even feel like I made it. 
like I made it, but like not with so much intention. It just came out of me. So I can almost get a kick out of something because even though it came from me, it was less, it wasn't just like so on purpose or so intentional or so in a book or out of a, inside of a box. You know what I mean? So that's fun for me. Um, and of course you want to go down the road of, you know, learning a ton of music theory, do that too. That's fun. Um, or is it fun? I don't know, but do that. Um, but you know, I just, you know, my little brother right now is, is learning guitar and music and he's great. He's writing songs and he hit me up and he's like, yeah, you know, I just feel like I have a wall around me because I don't know music theory. And I said, well, first of all, then go learn it. Second of all, though, you don't have a wall around you because everything I write in Born of Osiris, I'm not thinking about theory. Does that blow your mind? Maybe. I don't know. But the point is this, there are no walls until you allow there to be. Um, you know, music theory is a box and that's fine. It's nice to know what, what, how it works because you, because things that are outside of the box might sound a little off, but then sometimes teasing outside of that box can be fun. And I think generally if something's wrong or gross sounding, you can tell, you don't need theory to tell you that. So anyways, don't be so hard on yourself. If you don't have theory is my point. What's your favorite snack? My favorite snack, man. I like uh, Cheetos. <laughs> um, and yeah, the joke growing up was, is that why I have orange hair? That's what comes to mind, Cheetos. Win next album. Ha ha. Fucking today. I wonder if this is the same person that always says win next album daddy on the podcast. But yeah, it's fucking today. Hell yeah. All right. Would you guys consider selling the stems for this album like you did for the Eternal Rain and the Simulation? Yes. So at this point in time with Sumerian, when you turn in a record, you have to turn in the stems. So I imagine they'll be on sale. Are they on sale today? I haven't checked because I'm just doing this with you now. But um, they might be up now. Uh, if not, they'll probably be up soon. What do you consider to be your creative purpose? I think my purpose is to make you feel something in a world where we medicate because we're sad or we medicate because we're anxious or we feel like that anything that's not fucking awesome is just hell and I'm a victim and there's something wrong with me. It's not the fucking case. It's not the case. Life's fucking hard sometimes. It's, it, it is what it is. And, and there's going to be shitty people doing shitty things, often to good people. It's just the way the world works. Um, and so what I want to do is give you a break from that so you can listen to my music and you can feel something. And listen, I might have been depressed when I wrote this part and it might sound that way, but it made me feel better. And sometimes that can make you feel better. Or maybe it's the happy part that I wrote when I was feeling really happy and you listen to that and maybe you're happy now. My goal, my creative purpose is to make you feel something and hopefully it's beautiful. Can you explain why the... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, what drives you to practice? Um, just songwriting, right? Because that's my passion in life, as I said. You know, documenting the way I feel into a song uh, makes me play guitar. You know, so as, otherwise, like if I d wasn't a songwriter and I just had like an amp and a guitar in a room, I would play a lot less, I bet. You know, I love playing. I would play. But, you know, practicing scales and techniques, uh, you know, I kind of been doing that for over 20 years now, not to sound look at me. But it's the songwriting that keeps me around these days because I have like to think I've done most of the techniques. You know, there's some of the newer Tosin techniques that I need to try that are real cool. Um, but yeah, you know, I'd probably work on new technique would be something to keep me around if I wasn't able to write songs. But it's definitely songwriting that keeps me around. Did you try anything new musically that ended up being on the final cut of the album? Yeah, I'm singing. So on the song Waves, I sing the pre-chorus. And then when the chorus hits, it's Ronnie and Joe screaming, but I also sing a third layer. Uh, so I'll be like the maybe deeper voice, medium to lower voice while they scream. Okay. <laughs> In the song waves. So check it out. Hope you like it. <clears throat> Haley, love your podcast. Thoughts on release strategy for a smaller band. Yeah. So, and the question says singles. And I would say yes, because... I think until you're established in like a full business, maybe signed. I know not everyone wants to be signed these days. There's an independent push going on. I respect that too. I would say singles, you know, build yourself up with singles. So each time you put out a song, make sure there's content with it, whether it's a playthrough or a music video. Obviously, 
New bands can't always afford music videos. I get it, but you can do a playthrough, right? So put out a song, give it content to, for people to enjoy the song either and then look at the content or maybe the content pulls them into the song, vice versa, whatever it may be. But I would recommend singles. When you have a following, um, then yeah, I would say, you know, put together a first full length. And I, But I also think that the singles are going to help you learn who you are as a band uh, sonically. You may get to the... You may be doing the same kind of stuff, and then the fifth single you do, or the fifth song you write, something new happens, and you're like, oh, shit, we should do some more of that. And then now it becomes a part of your sound, uh, you know, which you wouldn't have known you know, before the album if you just did the album. Or you might have hit it, um, like track five, and then the album's done, but you just found this new part of your sound that you like, but you didn't have enough time to incorporate into the whole album. So I would do a ton of singles, f- uh, figure out who you are, what, what you guys like to do, what you're good at. And when you really, really know, then drop your first full length. What do you think of gang violence? I mean, I think it's fucking terrible. I grew up in Chicago, so it's fucking terrible. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, fortunately I wasn't like in the thick of it, but don't get me wrong. I didn't grow up in some (laughs) fucked up area in Chicago, but I'm just familiar with it. Seen it. Even if it's from a distance, it's terrible. You know, it's, uh, I don't know what other answer you want. Sorry. (laughs) It's fucking terrible. <clears throat> what is your favorite metal band other than Boo? I don't know. I'm just, uh, I can tell you what, I, I've been enjoying Sleep Token lately, and they're coming out with a new album. They put out a song called Alkaline. I love their first album, Sundowning. I love. They're just really interesting to me. Um, so, you know, I hope you know who they are. If you don't, check out Sleep Token. I'm not sure they're fi- my favorite metal band, but... For the risk, you know, I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes and think of that while you wait here in silence, but uh, that's someone who comes to mind. When normally touring, does Boo pick which bands go along on the tour? Yeah, we do. So usually we talk with our agent and he'll say, hey, here's the budget that we have for your direct support. That's the band that plays before us. Here's the budget we have for your two of four, your one of four, if it's a four uh, band package, right? Now you go and you say, hey... He'll be like, hey, what bands do you want to bring out? And we'll, we'll throw a bunch of bands, and he'll be like, they might fit here with this amount of money you have for this spot. Now, then it gets into, do they feel like they're worth more? Do they feel like they don't want to open? Do they feel like this? Sometimes we'll send money, uh, an offer to a band to play right below us, and they'll be like, no, we think we're as big, as big as you, so we want to play next to you and switch, or we want to co-headline, or we don't want to play below you at all. We want to play above you. So a lot of things change. Um, and so, yeah, so we do. So as far as local bands, so that's not something we pick. That's going to be your local promoter. So if you're a local band, I mean, if you're really, really close to me, I'm sure that I could make that happen. But like, um, you know, generally your promoters pick your local acts and we do pick the bands that play below us. Um, and then it's just a contract negotiation game to see if what we're willing to offer works for them, whether it works for their schedule, their budget, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. When can we expect the rest of the tour dates for Boo? Because I will travel to Texas. Yeah, so end of July, Texas. And I mentioned earlier, fall, some U.S., winter, some Europe. Early next year, big America, like major markets, Dallas, Chicago, you know, L.A., that kind of shit, downtown New York. All right. What's your favorite snack to munch on? I think I fucking had this question twice. Did I answer that? I said Cheetos, right? Uh, Okay, last question. What... Do you do hand exercises to improve dexterity other than practicing? So what I would recommend is, I mean, so the answer is maybe on tour, yeah, before shows. I'll do chromatic. So it's just like one, two, three, four, next string. 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 When you get to the top, then I'll move up. Five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two. Then up. Uh, now you're on the lower thick string. So that's one. I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, they have... Uh, one thing that's really important, I don't even know call this a warm-up, but like hand warmers. I like to put gloves on before we play so my hands don't get cold. So you'll catch me walking around like gloves no matter, even if it's not that cold. Um, and you, some, if it's real cold, put hand warmers in. Also, another exercise you can do, slap your hands together really hard, 10 times, like really hard, okay? And what you're going to have is you're going to see they're going to get red. And why is that? Because, you know, blood is, is cold. Uh, heading to the surface it's going to that area it's um it's and it warms your hands so slap your hands together 10 times really fucking hard i know it sounds silly give it a second do it 10 more times really fucking hard and look at your hands they're going to be red and feel them they're going to be hot so try that out i think uh 
Trent from After the Burial gave me that tip. He said he saw it on some like wildlife stuck in the wild fucking show or something like that. So shout out to Trent for giving me that because I use it all the time. Guys, I'm like really pumped right now because it's been over a year since I can do this part of the podcast and it's fucking tour dates, right? Cool. July 27, we're in Corpus Christi, Texas at House of Rock. July 28, we're in Austin, Texas at Come and Take It Live. July 29, we're in Houston, Texas at Scout Bar. July 30, we're in San Antonio, Texas at Vibes Event Center. Vibes, I like that. July 31, we're in Lubbock, Texas at Jake's. Uh, and guess what? August 1st, we're where I live right now in Dallas, Texas. We're at Gas Monkey. Well, that feels good. There's not a lot of tour dates, but it's just nice to be back on the podcast where I can talk to you about tour dates because we fucking have some. That's exciting. Um, cool. Anyways, uh, again, sorry for the last two weeks. No podcast. We're back on track now. Um, if this is your first time here and you're coming here because the new album, welcome. You know, this is a little community that uh, I really enjoy. It's not that big. Hopefully it grows. If it doesn't, then it stays personal with you because I'm going to keep doing it. Um, I enjoy doing it. Um, and again, lastly, Tuesdays on my Instagram, Leo Cyrus, submit a question. And I will most likely, unless there's a shitload of them or it's inappropriate, or I even answer inappropriate ones, by the way. But, you know, there may be a reason why I don't answer it. There may be just too many. But, um, yeah, Tuesday, submit your question. Friday, I'll answer them. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next week.